Hi, my name is Whitney Hauer. I'm a Renewable Energy Specialist for the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management in the Pacific Regional Office. Our office is based in Camarillo, California. I'm also the BOEM Oregon Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Task Force Coordinator. And I just want to say a thank you to all the participants who have joined here um, this morning for this webinar. I'm going to provide an overview of the offshore wind energy planning effort to date in Oregon. Next slide. So for those of you who are not familiar with BOEM, our mission is to manage the development of energy and mineral resources on the outer continental shelf in an environmentally and economically responsible way. Environmental protection is, is critical and integrated into our decision-making process, and BOEM uses science to inform its environmental analysis, conduct consultations, and to design these critical studies that then inform decision-making. The jurisdiction on the U.S. West Coast is the Outer Continental Shelf, or the OCS, and it's in federal waters from 3 to 200 nautical miles. As depicted on the map on the left shows BOEM's jurisdiction, and it excludes national marine sanctuaries, which you can see grayed out in, uh, off the coast of Washington and California. Next slide. Our renewable energy authorization process, this is specific to offshore wind, is a multi-year process. There are four um, discrete phases in this process, from planning and analysis to leasing, site assessment, and construction and operation. Next. In our planning and analysis phase, this begins with an intergovernmental renewable energy task force, which brings together governmental bodies to coordinate and inform BOEM for its decision making. Often this in its planning, it begins with data gathering um, to collect data and information to inform a call for information and nomination. I want to note that today in Oregon, we have an Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Task Force, and we are currently in this data gathering phase. It's early in the process. The call for information and nominations is BOEM's formal process to solicit feedback on an area identified, and also to solicit nominations requesting interest in that particular area for development. With that information from the call and its feedback, BOEM goes through a process called area identification to identify wind energy areas, or WIAs, that are then subject to further environmental review under the National Environmental Policy Act. Next slide. Then we move into our leasing phase, which includes a proposed sale notice, a final sale notice, auction, and then lease issuance. It's important to note that lease issuance does not construct um, does not allow for development in the waters, but instead provides the lessee or the developer the right to provide BOEM a site assessment plan and then a construction and operations plan for review and approval. Next slide. In our site assessment phase, the lessee has a five-year period to characterize the site, and to, um, which includes the environmental information that it needs, its meteorological information, geophysical, geotechnical, and other biological surveys all to inform its construction and operations plan. Next slide. This last phase in our authorization process uh, begins when the lessee provides BOEM a construction and operations plan for both technical and environmental review. That environmental review, again, includes um, NEPA review. There are other subsequent reports that are required um, before construction is authorized and I also want to note that BOEM has a strong decommissioning requirement in the form of financial assurance um, and then also has decommissioning requirements as a part of the authorization. As I just provided a short overview of our multi-year uh, process, I again, again want to highlight that in Oregon we are in the early phases of this planning with data gathering. Next slide. As I briefly mentioned, um, with BOEM, and Oregon's Intergovernmental Renewable Energy Task Force. This is a body that provides uh, input into our leasing process. The task force for Oregon began in 2011, but was reinvigorated over the last few years specifically for offshore wind. In September of 2019, the task force met to discuss the offshore wind planning approach, and from that meeting, it resulted in BOEM and its state partner in this effort, the Department of Land Conservation and Development, to draft a data and a data and uh, excuse me a data gathering and engagement plan to outline what planning would look like for the state of Oregon. Last summer in June of 2020, that uh, task force met again to discuss that plan, 
and at the meeting, it resulted in Bowman, the state of Oregon, committing to an offshore wind energy planning process. That plan was finalized with feedback given at the task force meeting, um, and it's available on our website at boehm.gov slash Oregon. Next slide. As detailed in the plan, the data gathering effort is roughly a 12-month process with the start of the finalization of the data gathering plan from the fall of 2020, um, planning to run through this fall, the fall of 2021. The Oregon Offshore Wind Mapping Tool, or OrWind Map, is the tool that, that BOEM and the state are using to collect that data and to provide data visualization to the public. The potential area for leasing is in federal waters offshore Oregon, where offshore wind is economically and technically viable in water depths of less than 1,300 meters and with an average wind speed of at least seven meters per second. As you can see on the map on the left, this depicts, um, this shows that this planning effort is for the entire coastline. Um, and the planning area itself is, is larger in that um, we're collecting data and information from both state and federal waters and onshore with any relevant or pertinent data to inform offshore wind energy development. Next slide. That concludes my presentation. I'd like to hand this over to Frank Pendleton um, for his presentation. Thank you.